Yeah. Empower who? Empower me. Hmm. So going going back to to the statistics about about uh, team dating violence, uh, if you're if you're willing and open to share, and uh, just just as a disclaimer for uh, for any of our viewers and listeners for empowerment, like we um, we we love to ask the questions, but uh, but we like to make sure that any of our presenters or or advocates that they're safe when they're speaking, so um, they are free to not answer the questions at all. So I'm not forcing uh, anyone to answer the questions, um, and I hope I stand b- behind their decision 120. percent So um, so. Uh, my question would be like, uh, were you ever in a, a in a? I, I know Mia said toxic, uh, but I want to like an abusive relationship, uh, whether that uh, be physically or or mentally. And how and how did you? Uh, when did you recognize that? And how did you recover from that? Mm-hmm. I can say that I was. Um, once again, me and my boyfriend love him dearly, but it, it has been some challenges over these past eight years. And so we had a situation where we did break up and I decided to, um, in no disrespect, I tried to, I started to flip for the other team. So I started dating um, a, a lady that was older than me. Um, and it was, it was mentally abusive because she was very clingy to me. Um, she was extremely clingy to me and it was a lot of emotional abuse. It was um, every time I would talk about us breaking up or her going home, she would threaten to commit suicide. And mm-hmm. for those of you who know, um, when I was eight years old, my father committed suicide. Um, and so, and then of course, later on, I ended up in defects at 15 because my mom put me in foster care. Um, but that was one thing that played on my psyche because the last person my my dad had a conversation with was my mother, and my mother will never reveal the details of that com- um, that conversation. But I feel like I felt for a long time that she could have done or said something to help keep him here. And so, with that situation, it was a constant. I want to kill myself, and I am experiencing this, and I'm seeing these people, and and. and it got to a point where it was like, okay, enough is enough. I'm mentally drained. I don't want to be in my own house. I don't want to be around you. And she would also say, I have no place to go. Even though she lived with her mom like 20 minutes down the road, she would just ultimately say, I have no place to go. I'm so alone. I'm this, I'm that. And she also was going through gender dysphoria. So um, it was just, it was so much. And it was so tacting on me. Um it got to a point where she tried to commit suicide in my house and um, once they transported her to the hospital and everything she was all happy and jittery to be in the hospital she was calling me all happy and everything and I was like okay it's something something not right with you um, and then I ended up going on a trip with Georgia Empowerment at my first FYI conference and she was mm. she after she left the hospital she would go visit her her sister in Florida at that point, when I was in the airport and I was talking about breaking up with her, she had a whole meltdown. I went back home. I immediately packed up all her stuff and shipped it out through the post office first thing when I got back and changed my locks because it was just so much on me. It was so heavy. I didn't want to be around my friends. I didn't want to be around my family. Um, and I had these, and my friends were living with me at my t- at the time, my sister and my nephew, and it was just like, I I'm losing my mind because on top of all of that, I had just had a bad breakup months before. And the, and the day that I got back from that trip that we went on, my grandfather passed away. So I was experiencing grief. I was from not the only the loss of my grandfather, but from the, at the time, the, I want to say we were together for four years at that time, at that time, the four year relationship with someone who, you know, is the love of my life. Um, and I was just confused about so many things. And the first thing I did, which was toxic to her, was to jump into a relationship. But she was waiting for me open arms because she just knew it was open season and that I was in a vulnerable state. So, mm. yeah. So that, it was more of that, that. Yeah, so it, it was more of that emotional manipulation uh, yes. to, to keep you in. 
and and sometimes like I I know I I've, I've experienced that, and sometimes that's that's that can be worse than than physical uh, abuse because you you like you don't want to see the person go, but you don't want to stay or whatever, uh, and you, and you just feel guilty like um, even if it's just you know it's, it it could be just a threat, you'll just feel guilty uh, if something if something were to happen or what have you, so you stay, uh, which only worsens your your self esteem or or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I think I saw what what somebody else um uh, wanted to jump in that. I've been through the emotional like I actually had one of my child's fathers tell me that he had cancer. Um yeah. Told me he had cancer and I believed it. I believed it but I don't understand how you have cancer and don't don't seek treatment from a professional or try to go through some type of chemo. I know cancer doesn't, I mean, unless by the grace of God, I don't think it just disappears like that unless you get the proper treatment. And um, I just, I know he's always been that manipulative type. Like, just, I want to tell y'all his nickname, but I'm not. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, you can, well, you you can say a nickname. Don't say his real name. His nickname is True. And every time I get in an argument with him, I tell him, you are such a lie. Like, you should have never had <laughs> your name True. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I hope nobody doesn't know. <laughs> but, like, seriously, he lied to me about that. And, like, I mean, I just felt really manipulated. Like, how can you lie about something like that? That's serious. Mm. Like people are actually enduring that. Yeah. Right. And I can't I can't see uh Mia's face, so I, I don't know um if, if you had uh something for that as well. No, I'm okay. Okay. Awesome. Hope. Um, just verbally abusive, a lot of yelling. Um and that was uh, honestly triggering for me, um, just because of you know my past. Um, but yeah, I just I, I left. Um, I don't I don't know. I think it was uh, gradual. At first, he would just you know uh, go up a few octaves when he wanted me to do something, and then it just went to you know full blown yelling, and I just couldn't take it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I I I feel like for me, one of my things is. Uh, I mean, we could we could argue and we could uh, we could discuss something, but it has to be civil and uh, it can't be in my uh, in my fortress of solitude. Like when I come home, I just like to like I like that to be my peaceful palace. Like so, uh, but I, I definitely don't mind having having great discussions. But I think that's one of the things that uh, sometimes isn't isn't taught, and and you have to see somebody going through a great relationship and having good arguments. Uh, or productive arguments in order for you to know, okay, this is totally wrong. I can't be putting up with this because uh, my dad or my right. boss or, or or my group on parents didn't, didn't do this, so this shouldn't this shouldn't be happening. Like, uh, I think that's some of those conversations that that sometimes get overlooked. That's so that's so vital. Mm-hmm. Um, Jen, did you have something? I didn't want to cut you off. No, I mean, so I feel like I'm in like a weird situation because like. I would say like I never really exclusive dated, exclusively dated until my current partner. And that, like I grew up in a household with a ton of family violence, like domestic violence. My parents escaped, like left from a genocide. Like I grew up with just like just my parents always fighting and yelling and us having to like leave the house. But like I think for me, like it kind of translated to when I started like dating. I never really had like anyone I would call my boyfriend or girlfriend, but I had people that like I saw, right? So like definitely the dynamics themselves weren't healthy, but like I only were like there was like such a fair degree of like, I guess, detachment in them that like if I felt someone was catching feelings, I would just like kind of push them away. But then I would say like definitely on the flip side, like the male friends I chose to have, I overlooked a lot, you know, like I would overlook like really toxic behavior from them. I would overlook like verbal abuse or gaslighting. Um, And it took me like years just to leave like those friendships, you know. 
But so, so what, what, is, what is gaslighting? What is gaslighting for those that don't know? What, yeah. What is, what is that? So gaslighting is like when somebody, when you like bring up a concern, but then like that abusive person will kind of flip it and make it seem like it's your fault. So like that can look like someone telling you that like you're crazy or you're just making it up or you don't remember it properly to like, you know, I, I don't even want to talk about this. It's just a crazy idea you got from someone else. You know, we see that a lot in abusive relationships, whether they're platonic or romantic, you know. Mm. Um, but actually, like the National Domestic Violence Hotline, like the national folks, they consider gaslighting as like a formal tactic of power and abuse. Um, so if you mm. go into any domestic violence curriculum, they're going to talk about gaslighting, no matter where it is or what target audience that it's focusing on. Yeah. And so um, um, it's funny with that, uh, when, when y'all when y'all did the training with us, uh, one of the things that that was brought up was was someone you know that you're in a, well, one of the ways that, that you, that you kind of figure in a bad relationship is if uh, your significant other uh, tries to keep you away from those that are advising you. So they try and uh, isolate you from, from your people. Okay. So uh, I'm curious for, for anyone that's on here, have, have y'all ever been in a situation where there's like, no, you can't go out with, you can't talk to your friends. Why are you talking to this dude? Or, or, uh, or I don't know, you shouldn't be around your, your, uncle or cut I don't know so uh have y'all had that situation and and what what was the result of that so I've actually hmm. mostly seen it in the relationships of my friends in which they were talking about the ways their girlfriends would treat them like cisgender relationship heterosexual relationships they would talk to, about like like I've had male friends where like their girlfriends were like, I don't trust her. So you're not allowed to talk to her anymore. Mm. You know, and I don't know if anyone else mm -hmm. resonates with that, but that sucks because then you just lose someone and you're kind of like, what did I do wrong? You know, but it mm -hmm. wasn't actually you, you know? Yeah. I've, I've heard that. I, I, I have heard that. Yeah. Perpetration actually for teen dating violence for men and women are like pretty similar rates. Like with victimization, we see higher rates of females versus males, but with perpetration, the numbers are pretty even actually. So I usually like try to talk to people like, you know, if you're a male survivor, that's, that's normal. That's respectable. You know, there's a really famous quote that men are a part of the domestic violence movement as survivors before they are um, abusers or perpetrators. So I think there's a lot of stigma there that needs to be breaking down too, but I'm taking up a lot of yeah. stuff for someone else talk. No, that's that's <laughs> that's fine because I I know there are uh, that that stigma is out there where uh, where you're not supposed to uh, hit hit a woman even if you're trying to defend yourself and um, you're supposed to just take it um, and if you uh, and, and it, I think it even goes on to like uh, being uh, sexually assaulted. Uh, by uh, by a woman like it's it's kind of looked down upon if you if you if you have a problem with that or, or whatever. Right. So. Right. Um. So I am curious. This question is going to go into another one. So for uh, for those of you <laughs> for those of you um, who, who well you all have have been dating uh, have you. What what is the rule on having platonic uh, relationships with uh, with the opposite gender? Like, ha has that been an issue with y'all, uh, or have I you can't ever do been? It. Yeah, you can't have this. It, it's not what? successful. It's never successful. It, they always want some type of sexual relationship. A mess. Right? Really. Yeah. So, so you haven't been able to have have one one guy friend, one guy mentor, or anybody that that didn't that didn't just want sex. You know what? I'm I'm so lying. There is one guy, and I always say he's a miracle because I don't even understand. Probably because he was married and he really loves wife, you know. But um, we can have a conversation without it being sexual. He won't sex, uh, become. Um, flirting towards me, flirtatious towards me, or nothing like that. But that was like that's like the first guy in a whole lifetime. Hmm. Really? Uh, how 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 important is that? Um, actually, it was very important to me because, and he's probably gonna watch this at some point, but. He helped me through a lot of uh, hard emotions that I, I was going through. 
um, yeah, he helped me through a lot. Just being able to talk about what I was going through to him without him actually coming on to me was very important. Mm. I'm going to go to uh, Ishanti. I can say yes, um, but it's, it's various to that because typically my male friends are gay. <laughs> um, I've ha- tried to have male friends that were, you know, straight, but then they start looking at me and I'm like, okay, like this is not a, this is not what it is. Um, and the only other way I've been able to have platonic relationships with males is if they're a friend of me and my boyfriend, because the thing is, if all three of us are friends, then the, well, you already see how we operate in our relationship and there's the level of respect because a lot of people look up to us. Like we were that relationship goals relationship for a while and I used to hate it because it kind of reminded me of being that poster child in foster care. And I'm like, y'all don't see what we have going on in behind the scenes and how we're crumbling right. behind the scenes, but y'all are like, y'all are goals. Um, but in order, but there's a mutual respect for not only him as my boyfriend, but for me as a person. It's like, well, I know Shanti's not really like that. She's not going to go for this or that. Because like I said, I'm a very forward person. I will put you in your place. I will check you. And I'll let you know, like, I'm not attracted to you. This ain't what it is. Don't even think about it. <laughs> I'm one of those people. And so I've been able to successfully have relation, friendship, platonic friendships with males on that base. Hmm. What about, what about like any, uh, any great, uh, any good male, male mentors that, that could like advise you like on, on like dating or, or anything like that? Have you ever been able to, to, to reach those levels with anyone? And I know this is going to sound weird, but um, before me and my boyfriend became a relationship, he was that for me. He was like, this is how you should be treated as a woman. Um, Because I had no one to tell me. um, And I love you dearly. I can call you now. Um, But before, I didn't have anyone to call me and tell me, like, you're a lady, and this is how ladies should be treated. This is how you should be talked to. Like, I didn't have that before. And so now... Um, so he served as that before we decided to cross over, which it was me being a very forward, direct person. And I told him, like, you're my boyfriend now. <laughs> um, if, if I had never told him that, he still would have been that person for me. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Hope. Um, I would say yes uh, for me, um, but... So I, I, I'll say currently, yes. Yeah. So my fiance and I, we um, we went to high school together. Um, we basically know, you know, everybody. Well, we know each other's friends. So we are able to do that. Um, but in previous relationships, uh, it just hasn't worked out. Um, not because of something that, you know, another guy did, but because um, – guys, well, some guys just typically aren't comfortable with um, females having other male friends, um, especially if they both start off as friends, um, maybe uh, because of the fear of uh, people thinking that, you know, they're going to get too close and, you know, know, natural things happen, you develop feelings for people. So it's a a tough question. And uh, Mia, before before I go on, are we still on the question of are we have I been able to have platonic relationships with? Yes. Um, yes, I have. I mean, I don't have any specific story to tell. Um, um, it's not to say that may, maybe they didn't that they didn't want to. It's just that we <laughs> kind of kept it at that. Um, but yeah, I don't have an interesting story. I have a few male friends. And it was, but it wasn't until I was, I was older that I actually um, ended up speaking to a older male figure about and getting like just some guidance on dating and men and those things. So older meaning like 25 and older. Hmm. I never had the perspective. Okay. On male. It was just always women. 
And so um, do you feel that that, that hindered you um, um, in dating since you didn't have, have somebody to kind of guide you, like ha have, have a, a male to, to show you that perspective? Um, I do. I mean, I definitely think there's a lot of truth in the um, having, and I'm putting on, putting up quotations, you all can't see me, daddy issues. Uh, um, I didn't grow up with a father or a father figure. And um, part of it was that I always gravitated towards women wanting a mother figure in my life. Um, and so I have, a, I have a lot of like mentors and very strong independent women that I look up to. Um, and so I do, to answer the question just straightforward, I do think that it, it caused an issue in some of my relationships because I didn't know what to expect. Um, mm. And I didn't know what to look for. And, you know, they say, they say, I don't know who they is, <laughs> that mm. when, when, when uh, young women start dating, um, a lot of times they do, um, their experiences are a di direct relation from what they experienced with their father. Um, or a male figure in their life, whether it was their biological father or not. Um, so I do think it hindered. I think that now I'm not certain that it, um, that talking to this, an, an older male mentor that I have um, has adjusted anything just because I'm a little stubborn and I kind of do, th do things the way I want to do it. But it, it, it is helpful <laughs> to have a different perspective and to be able to say like, Hey, this this guy said this, or this guy is doing this. What what could this mean? And, and you know, sometimes it, it is it's definitely a different perspective because sometimes you can go to women, and women are very one track minded. Sometimes I believe personally in relationships about like, girl, if he's doing this, he cheating on you, you know. And it's not always <laughs> the the answer. Um, so it has helped at times to just have someone to talk to and to get get a different perspective in general. Hmm. Okay. And so um, that that'll lead that'll lead me to to a, to another question. So uh, when when we when we did prep, um, and it's it's not a secret. Everybody everybody knows empowerment does prep. Uh, we prep before and we debrief after uh, a lot of times. Uh, so uh, one of the things that that we discussed was uh, the topic of older men uh, dating uh, dating dating older men or having an older significant other, and. Uh, and uh, I, I know, like, after, after we sat down and talked about it, like, I was thinking, like, that is what, what, uh, what those, those male mentors or those, those fathers or, or those uh, brothers or uncles is like, nah, dog, you, <laughs> you about to uh, start collecting ARP, you can't date my sister or whatever. So, um, like, like, what, what was the oldest? Um, the person that you that you dated and how young were you at that point in time? Or I guess what's the what's the the age gap? I have had a twenty year age gap, twenty and old and older. Oh crap! <laughs> um, and and I think you know, um, obviously well you can't see my picture, but I I have always looked older. Um, and then men that do end up approaching me tend to be older. Um. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that it's always a bad thing. I think it's case by case, so. Wait, how old were you? I mean, I've been in my 20s. I wasn't like a little kid. Okay, yeah, see, that's, that's different. And I'm going to show, show your picture since, uh, since you don't, you don't want to be seen uh, right now. I'm going to show up for, for a few seconds. I might be trying to find a man on this podcast, okay? <laughs> 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 Mia is um, bottom uh, <laughs> bottom uh, right. I almost forgot my uh, my left or my right. Can y'all see my screen? Uh, I can't see y'all faces anymore. Yeah, that's Mia. You can see Hope and Ori. Yeah. I'll pass the same question to uh, to Hope. Okay, let me just uh, clarify. Under age, <laughs> um, the the biggest age gap was like six years. Um, I didn't see it as crazy then, like I stated before. I think I was a freshman in high school, and he's a freshman in college. Um, so it was. Uh, we met during mission work, um, and yeah, uh, I don't know what happened after that. But as far as my adult life, I I guess 
around 2021, I've dated as old as, not old, but as seasoned as, um, <laughs> I would say mid to late 30s. Hmm. Okay, okay. And so, wait, you said uh, the the youngest, when, when, when you was younger, it was doing mission work? Were there weren't any mm-hmm. chaperones? Yes. <laughs> so, um, we uh, we went on a, so I was a missionary. Um, every summer I would do mission trips uh, for the entire summer, and we met, uh, he was an older um, missionary, and then when we came back home and finished the mission trip, we lived in the same city, and we went to the same church. So, um, yes. Did, did he know that you was young? Yes. What the uh, church you know, say? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Did anybody know? Yeah, that that is a good question. Did anybody else know? This is what you hide from the church. Um, I, yes, I, I I do believe that people knew, and I don't think that I looked older for my age at that time. Um, but then when <sighs> my mom was the most angry about it, and I didn't understand it at the time, but as far, I mean, everybody else, I, they didn't like really make a big deal about it. Um, I'll just share. Um, he, he, he picked me up one day from school um, really early when we uh, were dating, and for some reason, he got pulled over, and um, the officer asked for both of our IDs. So I provided my, of course, school ID. I didn't have a or Walker ID or however you call it at 14 and of course he had his um he had his you know regular ID and at that time they did uh they cuffed him and they uh put me in the back of the police vehicle um then they I don't know how I don't know how they were able to get my parents information but they called my um my mom and they actually took me home and gave him a citation and that was the last time that we that's a citation. Time, yeah. they, he he didn't know that sixteen to get you twenty. Like that's I don't know. right. But wow. well, maybe because you know nothing happened and we did go to church together, so we we were fr- church friends too. So because like my the way that my church was set up, it, it was it was like a um, a youth ministry and a young adult ministry combined. So there wasn't like a separation between. Um, younger youth and people that are, you know, off in college, they just grouped us all together. So we all spent time together. So it really didn't feel, it didn't seem like it was a big deal. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but what what's the, because that's borderline being on the premise of being like a pedophile. Like, that's really tricky. Like, and how do we help our, our you know, our younger brothers and sisters understand that that's not okay like he could be right. young in the mind like that because granted we we can all be mentally somewhere other than what our age print is but like how do we make sure that people know that that's not okay especially when you're young like that because it Absolutely. opens the door for other things and, well, and that's why i made that thing. right especially when you're so young and naive and not really aware um, of how crazy you know, things actually are, how much you really don't have in common. Um, I think that maybe for, you know, young girls who, you know, date such older guys, they think that they can relate on that level and he gets me and things like that, because those are some of the things that I was feeling. I always um, felt like a lot more mature for my age, and I felt like I I couldn't have those type of uh, conversations I wanted to have with um, people or young boys my age because it just wasn't there. Um, but that, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. It's really scary. And sometimes I, um, scare myself just looking back and thinking of, about how that even went about. It just, um, it's beyond me. And, and so for, um, I guess, I guess, uh, a, a good question, my, my next question is, was it, was it that y'all was trying to hide it or, or it was, it was um, yeah, did, did y'all try and hide it? I guess that would be the a good question. No. Uh, yeah, because. No, I don't. I don't. 
I don't know what he was doing on his end, but I can say on my end, I was not uh, hiding it or trying to hide it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, to Ishanti then, um, or okay. On... Um, I'm gonna hold head down on this one because I should have known better. I was <laughs> 21, and the I guess I can call him a sugar daddy now because that's technically what the situation <laughs> was. I just didn't know it then. <laughs> he told me he was 29, y'all. He told me he was 29. And when his birthday came around, we had to add an extra 10 years to that. Um, so yeah, that 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 is the, <laughs> the 21 dating dating a 39 year old. Um, but I had I can say that I I've had relations with men that were well over in their 40s. So yeah, that's. I'm just gonna leave that there. A little grave robber. Like how? How? Um. Who? Did did, did did you have any conversations like around that? Like. <laughs> like what? 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 What is well, it? Well, we what? didn't necessarily. Go ahead. Lord, this is a safe. Space. Well, what it was for me was, I was I was just thinking I was like you know. I want somebody that's mature. All they want to do on campus, because I just graduated from Albany State, for those of y'all who don't know, but a lot Ooh. of guys on campus, they just want to smoke, drink, and do the nasty. And I was like, I don't have time for that. I want to go on classy dates. Take me on trips, because I've studied abroad. So I'm a little culture. You could take me somewhere. I know how to act. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was an... One of my friends that was in school with me, she had, she was the one that kind of put the idea and educated me on what sugar daddies were. I didn't know what a sugar daddy was. And just so happened, three years later, I ended up being with a sugar daddy. I didn't so know. What, what is a sugar daddy? What is a sugar daddy then? A sugar daddy is somebody that is well older than you, <laughs> who offers nice things to you and to take care of you and to give you money. Um, in exchange for your time and relationship, that is the nicest way of, in the most educated way, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I see, I see everybody shaking, uh, shake, uh, or nodding in agreement. And uh, in my presence, in my spirit, I feel that uh, that Mia is nodding in agreement too. Uh, since I can't, since I can't see her face, I'm a, I'm a toss. Of, there. I agree with the definition. Yes, it's a nicely, nicely thought out definition. <laughs> okay, cool. Because you, you'll be surprised the definition that I heard from another uh, young person, but it's not, um, it's not okay to say it on this particular podcast, even though, <laughs> even though we're uh, <laughs> said everything. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Um, Story, like um, your um, your sit your situation, like one on your situation, and you gave uh, permission to to talk about. It. So uh, was was being trafficked, and I know that's something that you uh, that you advocate for currently. Like you you try to uh, make sure that that young people are safe. Um, and I know on the on the podcast that's uh, on the. The through their eyes or Oriana, that's uh we talked a lot more about that. Uh what is um what is a sign that a young person should be watch out for um to know that they're being groomed. To know that they're being what? Groomed. Groomed? Yeah. Amari, can I have a second, please? Please. Please. Um, well, uh, I would say for me, if a person wants to control everything you do, down to what you wear, where you're going, and who you're with, then that's an obvious red flag. Like, you know, that person 
wants to keep you in a controlled environment, possibly to try to brainwash you or things like that. Hmm. And is that is that one of the uh, from uh, Jen from from Pat V's uh, point of view? Is that is that one of the things that that y'all that y'all teach as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of really great organizations that are doing work with um, survivors of trafficking, especially young survivors of trafficking, one of which is Youth Spark, um, especially out of Fulton County. I don't know if y'all have heard of them. But um, definitely there's such a big correlation, like like commonality between the, the behaviors that we see in power and control tactics and like grooming behavior for somebody who um, is a, about to become a sort of like be put in the situation of which they are being trafficked. Um, we're looking at, you know, not even just the gaslighting and the extreme control that Oriana really nicely pointed out, um, but we're also looking at things like, um, you know, always needing to know locations, like telling you, like, if you really love me, you're going to go and do these mm. things for me, like starting to start the escalation mm. of, oh, well, I, last time you said you loved me, you did this for me. So now I'm going to ask you to really prove your love and do this next step, right? And young people, especially mm. people who grew up in households with family violence, right? If you don't have like healthy indicators of healthy relationships or you don't have someone that's talking to you about it, like it could be a slippery slope because like, what do you know, right? Here's someone older now mm. telling you what love is and you're trying to just kind of concede to that image. Um, Orion, does that like resonate? Yeah, so yeah. I think, yeah, it's like, I honestly all the different forms of gender violence from sexual violence to intimate partner violence to trafficking like a lot of those have really really common risk factors and you know escalation factors and outcomes um it's just really like trying to reach out to survivors early and have that social and peer support to be able to escape those situations hmm. um so Gosh, it, it doesn't seem like we've been on that long, but but we have, and it's just been like a, a really great conversation. Um, I guess the the question um, I have two two more questions, and Jen, if you have any questions, that that'd be uh, great as well. Um, I'm gonna start with: Have you ever unintentionally uh, pushed someone away? And and why um, and if you don't mind explaining how how did that happen and uh, and why do you think that why do you think you did that now like as you look back on it uh, I'll start with the Shanti since you just came off mute okay um, yes that's why I can say I've had all these experiences within the relationship that I've been in for you know, the amount of time I've been in it. Um, my boyfriend really wanted when we were younger to truly and fully love me. And I got into a space of self-sabotage because I was like, my dad left. And even because even in suicide, you know, that's a form of leaving. So that's a form of abandonment. He left me. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about me. My mom dropped me off in the, and told them that she wasn't picking me up and abandoned me at a hospital. My siblings hated me. Cause I'm the only one out of all my siblings who went into foster care, um, might I add. Um, and it was just rejection and abandonment after abandonment after rejection. And so it was like, I, I know you want to love me, but I'm not, I'm not a good person. I'm, I'm nobody cares about me. And I obviously I'm not good for anybody. So let, I don't want to ruin you. I, and I used to tell that to them all the time. I'm like, one day I'm going to mess you up. So you don't need to deal with me. Just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's truly the, like that's where I, I was in a space where I really, really hated myself. I hated who I was as an individual. I never saw how great of a person I actually was and how giving and how loving and comforting I can be. Um, and I just had it programmed in my mind that I got to get it out the mud. And if I got to do it by myself, everybody's left me anyway. So I don't expect you to be here too much longer. Hmm. And so... Um, it we it just finally one day it clicked and he was like I'm not going anywhere and he tells me all the time to reassure me he's like I'm not going anywhere so stop it stop mm -hmm. trying to push me away I got you so do you feel do you feel that if you would have um, 
had that uh, stability like uh, before you left care that that you would have been pushing people away or pushing him away? I I would say yes and no. If I had the stability, then I would I would have a little bit more comfort in who I was, but I still didn't know exactly who I was. Mm. So there still would have been some type of self-sabotaging effect that would have still been on me in other relationships. And for the and for I guess my, my additional question is for those that, that are watching that may be adult supporters that are listening for advice, um, how can how can they help a young person grow as far as like um, learning about relationships and, and things like that from um, so that they can have a healthy relationship. It's actually just flowing off of um, that the same conversation. Um, 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 I would say a lot of, especially in the situation that we are in, in the foster care system, we need a lot of reassurance. So constantly um, embedding in the young people, you know, you are powerful, you are loved, you are wanted. Um, that I, and I feel like that one right there, you are wanted, is the most important mm -hmm. because we all get into a space where we're not worthy and nobody wants us anyway. That's why we're here. We we kind of we kind of feel like the and it's a bad analogy, but from um, Family Guy, the prom night dumpster baby, we start to feel like that that mm -hmm. child, like like I was thrown out mm -hmm. at prom. My mom wanted to have fun, and so it's it's a letting them know that regardless of whatever space you're in, you were still wanted, you were cherished, you were loved. And so that's something mm. that's really important for adult supporters um, to really embed into their young people. Wow. I'm, uh, um, I, I'm surprised you used that reference, uh, that, that family guy reference, but that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. Uh, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm gonna go to to hope with the same question. And apparently my dog wants to ask the question too, but he can't speak English. So um I don't I don't recall ever unintentionally pushing someone away. Intentionally, absolutely, but unintentionally, um, no, I don't have that experience. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Mia? Um, yes, I have unintentionally. Unintentionally in the sense that I didn't rec I haven't always recognized it as an, uh, as now that I'm older, I do recognize it as something that I still do at times. Um, the self-sabotage. It's, and at, I don't always recognize it when it's happening. Sometimes it's just this, um, how are you going to respond in 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 rough situations or how are you like it's it's my way of trying to figure out are you going to leave after a little while because you just don't want to keep dealing with this um and it, it sometimes it just comes out in in um unintentional like unintentional arguments we could be talking about the smallest thing and somehow you know something else comes up and again it's not something that i am like i'm gonna that's what makes it unintentional i don't plan it um, but I don't, I haven't always recognized that as self-sabotage in relationships. And, um, but now that I'm older and a little more aware um, and aware of my trauma responses to things <laughs> um, and what triggers me, it is just, it's my way of avoiding um, the feelings of abandonment and, and mm. wanting to ensure that like, if I put my all in this, are you going to put your all in it? Or are you going to be just like everybody, every other adult in my life when I was younger that it felt like once they got to the nitty gritty of things, they were like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And they just disappeared. You know, so um, I mean, it's again, I d haven't always recognized it. I do now. So it's something that I work on. Um, and it's it's as I've gotten older, I, I am currently dating someone <laughs> that recognizes it, too. And he'll ask me. Like, is this like a self-sabotaging moment right now, especially if it comes out of nowhere? Um, but yeah, I think that. That's it. I, I was a little okay. confused by Ashanti on twice. Sorry. 
Yeah, me too. Sorry, <laughs> guys. I suddenly need pause. <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm go to Oriana and then I'm gonna ask my final question for everybody. And then uh, Jen, if you have any final questions. Yes. Uh, Ari. Um, what was the question? As far as uh, have you ever found yourself unintentionally? Um, I, I guess the, the common word that everybody uses is uh, uh, self sabotage relationship. Yes, yes I actually, um, yes. it happened to me once. Omari, Omari, Omari. It happened to me once. He's been quiet this whole time, I swear. Until he started. Come on. Okay. So, um, I found myself self traumatizing once before. It was actually a great man, and he was single, he had no kids. He was in his career working from home, like making good money. And he stayed right next to the mall. He would walk me to the mall. We would go shopping, all that good stuff. I could door dash whenever I wanted. I pushed that man away. I pushed that man away. And he ended up getting married and had two kids. And it broke me. It broke me. <laughs> so how... How how did you how did you push him away? I you know I had a lot of um, attachment issues. So with my my other son's father, um, I always felt like I always wanted to be wanted and accepted by him. So I found myself always throwing myself out there to try to be accepted and wanted by him. So once I realized that I was constantly getting rejected, I became I became the reject. Tour. So mm. it would be times where I would reach out to him and or I would, you know, just get mad for no reason and just be like, I don't want to talk to you no more. Don't call my phone again. I never want to see you again. Or I'll block his number. And it happened multiple times until and we will always get back talking until one day he was like, you know, if you do that one more time, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And I did it mm. one more time. And <sighs> yeah. I've had that conversation with somebody. It's like, yeah, you only have you only have so many times to do that <laughs> before before it's permanent. I didn't believe him <laughs> at all. Oh my god, you're like that was my worst heart heartbreak. Like I, I I don't have too many heartbreaks. I'm usually the heartbreaker, but um, yeah, my heart was broke. <laughs> mm. Mm. I hope I'm a, uh, I'm I'm gonna come to you and I'm gonna uh, let you kick off this last uh, this last question. Um, as well, if you want to answer answer that that question, but the the the, la the final question that I have um, that I have for um, for the group is, um, what is something that you know now um, that you would go back and and tell younger you, like, yo, make sure when you get in a relationship, uh, this is this is what you need to look out for. Or this is this is what you want, and, and this is what you do not want. Or whatever like what what is what is that that one thing that you tell younger you um in in care like this yeah be on watch the out for the energy suckers you know because because you know most people think that some men get with women for they might have them they feel like the woman has money or she has a good career or she might even have a house that they can stay in or whatever but sometimes men get with women with the sole purpose to destroy them like from the beginning they're like yo you look like an easy target i can destroy you and um just really suck you all up dry seriously and like you be looking around like you know you're feeling all drained mentally physically mentally and physically it's one thing to be drained mentally but mentally but to be drained physically because of your mental is is something else and there, there are a lot of male and female energy vampires out here that just will suck you dry Wow. Hope. Um, I would say um, to to focus on what you're bringing to the table. As even as a young person, I didn't answer one of the questions about uh, what I think you said was one thing that uh, you that you uh, liked or a trait that you saw in someone when you were younger that you you know don't like anymore. 
Uh, I think my family would uh, state or label me as dating people uh, who had something wrong with them or who needed to be fixed. Um, I would just say um, that uh, focus on, you know, being yourself, uh, being authentic in the relationship, uh, not trying to change someone, but also um, not changing yourself just for the sake of someone else wanting to be changed. I think that if you can avoid that, then you're off to a, a good start as a young person. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Mia, then Ashanti. Okay, if I could give any advice. Um, honestly, this is probably gonna sound really cliche and very boring, but just as much as you, you date and wanna meet other people, you've got to be willing to work on yourself. And especially a lot of us that come mm -hmm. came from foster, that grew up in foster care. Um, you know, I think that it is natural, especially when you're aging out too at that age to like, just kind of want to put it all behind you and, and not address it anymore or act like it just never existed and, and, and keep going. But I didn't start really learning more about what it is I, I actually want and, and desire in a relationship until I started going through therapy. And the therapy wasn't about other people, it was about me. So I, I started specifically going through trauma-focused therapy um, and I started working through my own things and it helped me to notice things that I, I was missing. And so I get it, I get that speaking to a younger group of, um, of youth, you know, that, that sounds great. And it sounds very adulty, <laughs> um, but it is so important. And I think that, yes, you can date while at the same time, still trying to work on you and focus on your own healing. Um, because that, because that healing, it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come in a week, two weeks, but I think it does kind of provide some guidance, um, through dating and um, allows you to see like, this is not, this is not something I want. This is something I'm accepting because of this. This is something that I thought may have been what love was, but it's not. And I think it just helps you to see it clearer. So if I could, that's my biggest piece of advice. It also is my point of advocacy and a lot of things. And you know that about me, Anthony, mental health, mm -hmm. but it's, it is so important, especially after care. It is so important. Um, so yeah. yeah. And I want to back, um, piggyback off of what Mia said. I, I completely agree. Figure out yourself. Work on your own self before you try to involve someone else in the mix. Because, and you involving someone else in the mix could potentially mess somebody else up. Um, so many things. And, and figure out what your standards are. Figure out how you want to be treated as a young lady or a young man. Or like, figure out what your standard is and figure out the things that are, that even if it's like something based off of TV, like, oh, I ain't going for that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go for that. Like, granted, TV influences, TV and media tends to influence us in a lot of ways, but it also has a lot of educational examples. So figure out what your standards are. Figure out how you want to be treated as an individual, all while trying to figure out your trauma and your mess so you don't mess up another person. Hmm. Awesome. Um I, I don't know, like, there are so many other questions that, that I have, but I know that we're running over on time. We may have to do a part two, like we, we might just have to do a part two. Um, Jen, did you, um, did you have anything that you, that you wanted to uh, leave everybody with? That, honestly, everything that y'all shared today was amazing. So thank you so much for sharing your stories and your experiences. Um, PADV is always here to help. So is all of, I believe, the 60 domestic violence shelters throughout the country. Um, basically, every agency does have a teen dating violence prevention program. So if you know somebody that needs to talk to an advocate, you are always welcome to call either the Georgia hotline or the hotline specific to your agency. Hmm. Yeah, and um, and we're gonna have um, um, uh, PADV back partnership against domestic violence for those of you who had, who had, uh, who joined a little bit late after we uh, set that. So we're gonna have them back, and we're gonna uh, actually do a webinar with them to talk about their their programs and talk about dating uh, uh, dating violence and and some ways to help prevent. Since since I think that 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 is your department preventative. 
or whatever, mm-hmm. and things to look out for 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 the for those of you who have friends that are going through going through a situation. So uh, I definitely look forward to to having that conversation again. Um, thank you, uh, Hope, uh, Oriana, uh, Mia, Shanti. Thank you for for joining. Uh, thank you for being open to sharing to sharing your your stories, your life, and your experience. Like it's it's up. I'm always astounded just listening to uh, listening to to you speak and and I'm happy that that we're able to have have this conversation because I know it's not have it's not have this conversation is not had um, a lot and so we like to make sure that that we cover any topic that people tend to shy away from so we're not done with this topic um, this just has to be a to be continued I uh, really appreciate you. Uh, for our audience, thank you for uh, for tuning in. Uh, we have a lot more content on our Facebook, uh, on our Spotify, on YouTube. We're going to be doing a lot of um, a lot of different events. Our cooking podcast is coming up. Uh, Ori is going to be uh, cooking um, cooking Rachel Davidson from OCA Off the Child Advocates uh, recipe. Uh, with that, we're going to be giving away uh, air fryers and um, and blenders and some and a whole bunch of other stuff. So you have to tune in. If you have the email, you know how to register to to apply for the uh, register for for the event. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, poetry slam, and then we have game night coming up in in March. So uh, be ready to have some fun with us. We really appreciate everybody for coming. Um, Hope y'all have a great night. Stay safe. And if you're tuning in from Texas, uh, I hope that you get warm and get your get your lights and stuff back on. So um, I don't have anything. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye you guys. Empower who? Empower me. Empower me.